Assalamu alaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the webinar on Pakistan Stock Exchange. Pakistan Business Professional Council, Abu Dhabi, and Pakistan Stock Exchange together welcome you in this webinar for the um, informative webinar. We are joined in this webinar with us are our council's friend from Austria. He is president of Austria Pakistan Association, Mr. Shahid Nadim. And we have with us together Dr. Kaiser Anis, the president of Pakistan Business Professional Council. We have Mr. Hassan Raza, head of the product and research Pakistan Stock Exchange. We have Mr. Raza Jaffrey, the Director, Research and Intermarket Securities. With us are, is Ms. Ifat Mankani. She is CEO, uh, JS Investments Pakistan. I will be moderating and will be welcoming the questions from all of you. As uh, you are aware, Pakistan Business and Professional Council works being of the business community, originally from Pakistan, living in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we continue our struggle to invite Pakistanis and non-Pakistanis to invest in Pakistan, whether it is in the industry or it is in business or stock exchange. We have carried out a number of sessions on Russian digital bank account together with the State Bank of Pakistan. We have uh, been dealing with the delegations coming from Pakistan who uh, wish to invite people for investment in Pakistan. Day before yesterday, we had the delegation from Gilgit, Baltistan, who are currently the uh, monthly host of uh, Expo uh, on the Pakistan's pavilion. And our struggle is to pass on this message to fellow overseas Pakistanis and uh, with the help of uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shahid Nadim in the European sector also that the one of the best and secured way of overseas Pakistanis investment is going through the stock markets in Pakistan uh, rather than going as entrepreneurs and I guess that all not only brings a very healthy investment in Pakistan it helps in developing the capital market and in turn develops the industries in the country. Today will be a more technical session and I'm sure our learned um, members from the Pakistani Stock Exchange will be giving more briefing for the professionals and non-professional investors, how we can boost investment to Pakistan and as well as uh, increase our investment incomes between individuals and the fellow family members. I would also like you, uh, the learned the ladies also to investments in a stock exchange. I, I guess that that is more better for them than running the small boutiques in various parts of the world. And that could be a home income as well as an encouragement for them to and participate more in the economic sectors of Pakistan. I would be requesting Dr. Kaiser Anis, the President, Pakistan Business and Professional Council, to give a welcoming note to the participants. Dr. Kaiser. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, Dr. Adishai Saab, thank you for detailed introduction of the Council and a brief about uh, our webinar and the names for the speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I welcome to the webinar on Pakistan Stock Exchange, the new ETFs and the KSC 100 performance in MSCI Frontier Market. This is an opportunity for the overseas Pakistani and the even in Pakistan. I, from this, I will, would like to welcome Mr. Hassan Raza of Pakistan Stock Exchange Mr. Raza Jafri of Intermarket Securities, Mr. Ifat Mankani of JS Investment. 
my members of the council, the community from uh, United Arab Emirates, and all the overseas Pakistanis. And even from Pakistan, there are many participating. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Pakistan Stock Exchange. As Pakistan Stock Exchange, uh, the CEO, their management are forefront working together with the council. And this is our, in the series, many, but in this uh, subject of stock exchange, the third in number. Uh, and the purpose of this, that this will educate all the overseas Pakistanis how they can do invest in these products as they are the assets uh, for Pakistan and they are always assets in all crucial time. This webinar series in line with promoting Russian digital account and investing in Pakistan Stock Exchange. As Dr. Adishai mentioned that we have series on Russian digital account also maybe seven on that together with State Bank of Pakistan. And with that resultant, there are some contribution from the Pakistan Business Professional Council on the 3.5 billion deposit in, in Pakistan. I again from here thank uh, Mr. Shahid Nadim, President of Austria-Pakistan Association, uh, who is one of leading in Europe uh, with other representative here, there, like Mr. Tariq Javesa, the community representative from Germany, um, Dr. Huma Jamshed, community representative from Spain, Mr. Chaudhry Shahzad, community representative from Switzerland, and Mrs. Sadaf Mirza, community representative from Denmark. In this webinar, the speaker will, will elaborate how the investor can access the Pakistan Stock Exchange and invest through ETF and the specific ETF structure and highlights how Pakistan Stock Exchange performing in the MSCI frontier market. Now, I just want to brief the, uh, the participant uh, what is an ETF? Uh, of course, in the stock market, they have individual stock, individual sector. But if you want to invest in equity, fixed income securities, and find it difficult to select the sector, identify security, conduct research, or track dividend, coupon, cap, then the ETF does it all for you. You don't have to put all uh, work on that. It aims to track the specified benchmark index which providing real-time price of the fund throughout the day. An exchange-traded fund is an investment product, collective investment scheme offered by asset management companies consisting of a basket of securities that tracks and index. ETFs are available to investors on exchange through stock brokers and trade like stock with real-time pricing during trading hours on an exchange. Therefore, they share the characteristic of both open-ended and mutual fund and stock. How do ETF pay out? ETF can potentially have two types of return, like normal capital gains. Investor can trade ETFs like a stock by buying at a low price and selling at a high price to realize a profit gain. So that is sort of a capital earning. But there is a dividend also. The fund manager usually receives dividends from the securities that comprise the ETF basket. The dividends may be distributed to ETF unit holder after the deduction of management fee, etc. Dividend distribution policy of the ETFs are described in their prospect or offering document. Why should I invest in ETF? ETF can offer lower operating costs than traditionally open-ended fund. Flexible trading and greater transparency by disclosing all holding, etc. And ETF is one way to invest in the stock market without buying individual stock exchange. By investing, by investing in, in an ETF, your money is instantly diversified across all of the underlying security in the basket. ETFs provide an easy way to diversify across different stocks, commodities bonds or other securities in the market where many ETF across multiple asset classes exist. Now coming to KEC and then you say, what is KEC Index 100? The KEC Index 100 is designed 
to measure the performance of 100 companies which comprise the sector largest market capitalization companies and highest market capitalization companies. And the objective is the primary object of the KC100 index is to have a benchmark by which the stock price performance can be compared to over a period of time. In particular, the KC100 is designed to provide investor with a sense of how the Pakistan equity market is performing. Thus, the KC100 is similar to other indicators that track various sectors of the Pakistan economic activity, such as a gross national product consumer price index. Now we say, what is the difference between uh, index fund and ETF? The main difference between an ETF and an index fund is ETF can be traded, bought and sold during the day, and index funds can only be traded at the set price point at the end of the trading day. Coming to explain on MSCI Frontier Market, what is M uh, MSCI Frontier Market? The MSCI Frontier Market index capture large and mid-cap representation across 28 frontier markets. The index includes 90 constituents covering about 85% of the float adjusted market capitalization in each market. Lastly, the Russian digital account, Pakistan logistical digital account RDN flows reached to 3.382 billion at the end of the January 22, 17 month since the program was launched. Out of the overall 3 billion 382 million deposited in RDA, 2 billion 319 million or almost 68% have been invested in NEA Pakistan certificate, which is great. The data shows out of the total investment in NPC, 1 billion 278 million have been invested in conventional NPCs, whereas 1 billion 41 million have been invested in Islamic NPC. A meager 34 million has made its way to the Pakistan trade. So our job is to expand this amount as much as we can. As a cent this is the central bank data. This is our target. And this account, as we say, can be opened in 175 countries of RDA. So from this, uh, uh, this webinar, I want to uh, request all the uh, All, all the uh, participants to invest in India. With that, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Shahid Nadim for his message for all the participants and 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 the and the area in the European areas. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Anis uh, and uh, Pakistan Stock Exchange, Hassan Raza Saab, uh, Raza Jafri Saab, and Ifrat Makani Saiba, and the other Dr. Uh, Hadi Said Saab, and other PBC uh, uh, members sitting here joining us, and all the other attendees who are uh, attending this uh, webinar. Um, I would say uh, is a great uh, idea that we are uh, organizing time to time such webinar to educate uh, overseas community because uh, overseas community, I believe, is a major pillar who can contribute a lot in Pakistan stock exchange and bring a big major change. But the thing is what I have observed, there is a lack of knowledge. People are not aware of how they can approach, how they can invest the way, the path, to invest in stock exchange. Um, by organizing such webinar, definitely this will improve the situation and people will aware in the future about how to invest and the path they can invest in now. In our, our and Pakistan, uh, Austria Pakistan Association, time to time we are uh, organizing such information such to educate uh, our members and uh, to educate the community around us. Uh, we are expanding our network also to involving other representatives from the countries uh, like we have already six to seven countries already have involved Germany, France, Switzerland, Spain, Denmark uh, and uh, Italy. They are already on board and we are expanding this network to all over the EU to have at least one or two representatives that we can spread this message uh, to educate people there. There are two uh, things actually we see that uh, right now. 
there is a one class uh, is a business class. They are already somehow uh, involved in a stock exchange or major schemes. They are taking advantage of it. But the other class is the normal common community. Uh, there is a lack of education. So such webinars definitely will educate them and we are spreading it. Right now is the COVID, so we are doing it virtual, but we have time to time physical events as well. So I would like to also request to the uh, representatives here, if uh, there is possible, they can also circulate us the material. If there is any marketing material they can provide us, we can circulate to community, we can circulate it to our members, and we can also uh, physically give to the members and the community attend our events. The way we can more educate the people and they can involve and invest in a future. Uh, the other things, uh, what I was saying, if it's possible, because uh, right now uh, there is a class other than US, uh, Canada, Australia, or uh, UK, we see there is a English language and still uh, I see that 60% um, people uh, are not very good in English. So we have to also bring, but they have money that I would also say they have money, but they are not very good in English. So they don't know how to follow up uh, exactly uh, to invest there. So uh, it's also good if there are any informative material you have in Urdu, please also circulate that will also help a lot uh, to understand people here. Uh, especially in Europe, there are the different languages like Spanish, um, French, German, Italian, other languages. And uh, people, um, it's a, as I say, 20, 25%, they are good, but 60, 65, they're having money, but they are not very good in English. That will help to educate them. It, it's about the knowledge. It's about to educate them. They have money. Of course, the many people, their wives are sitting at the home here. But and they can do this, they can spend even rather like sitting home, they can copy like in this. If they gave a one hour a daily or two hours, just take the interest in it, and they can bring a lot of change, like they can be a part of uh, this uh, growing uh, investment opportunities. And uh, while people right now doing business here, to be honest. Uh, if this is a very good opportunity, also a RD Russian digital account, the schemes Pakistan have right now, and the stock exchange is very attractive. Um, we are at our end, we are trying level best to uh, promote this as much as possible. Also um, with your help, it's a Dr. Anis and all the participants here, definitely in future, we will promote this world and spread it to around the Europe. And uh, thank you very much for now and looking forward to hear all of you. Thank you, Shahid Nadim Sahib, uh, for giving us a brief uh, about the activities in uh, Europe and your forming a more organized group. I'm pleased to learn that uh, Pakistanis living in those areas are more familiar with the local languages. That expands the um, horizon of Pakistanis and that expands the opportunities of uh, the Pakistan's economy and the stock markets investment. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Exactly. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. That is the issue right now because the people living here, either they know Urdu or they are good in their own languages, like the Spanish, French, but oh. they are very not very good in English. So oh, there that, can that... fill a gap. Like either we can, because two or three major languages, for example, Span, uh, Spanish, Italian, French, and German. These are the three, four major languages here. If we can also translate that material in these four languages, mean we can cover the whole Europe and the major countries in Europe. So this will also bring a lot of change. Shahid Nadim Sahib, it's a good suggestion. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be uh, inviting... Uh, Mr. Hassan Raza, uh, he is the regional head and head of products uh, management and research in Pakistan Stock Exchange. Uh, Mr. Hassan has over 23 years of expertise in the area of asset management, ETF, indices, financial analysis, equity research, credit analysis, and financial modeling. We've been learning these things from him. Uh, he has, uh, prior to joining in Pakistan Stock Exchange in 2018, 
Mr. Raza worked for various positions in Pakistan, North America, and Middle Eastern financial sector, remained associated with NAS Business School in Pakistan, Basata Capital, KSA, and Felcom Financial Services in KSA, Sama Central Bank of Saudi Arabia, Bank of Montreal, Canada, International Financial Data Services Limited, Canada, and Askari Commercial Bank in Pakistan. Mashallah, well, well covered. Uh, you have from North America to uh, Middle East and Pakistan. He is CFA, Charter Holder, MBA from University of Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and MBA from Qaid Azam University, Islamabad. Mr. Hassan also holds diploma, Associate from Institute of Bankers of Pakistan, a Bloomberg Certified Equity Essentials and Commodity Essentials has completed Islamic financial qualification from Chartered Institute of Securities and Investments in UK and other miscellaneous uh, important courses. So he is well experienced and done it. Uh, Mr. Hassan Raza, please uh, brief us what is happening in the stock chain, how can we go about advising the overseas Pakistanis? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shahid. Uh, I'm humbled by all this uh, explanation that or description that you have provided. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Anissa, thank you very much. For, uh, you know, you have provided uh, a great introduction of ETFs in a very uh, summarized manner and it covers almost all aspects. And uh, Shahid and Nadeem Saab, thank you uh, for your introduction and giving us insight about uh, Pakistanis uh, living and working uh, abroad, those areas. And thank you to all uh, participants uh, for joining in, uh, our fellow citizens. And uh, we'll also hear from uh, Raza Jafri Saab and Ikhaz uh, Mankani. So with that, um, you know, I, I think I have uh, some time to talk about Pakistan Stock Exchange. So I have a brief uh, presentation. Uh, let me see if I can share that. Okay, great. Uh, oh, is it? Uh, Visible in, in full screen mode? Yes, if there's yes. some. Yeah, okay. Yes, right. yes, we, we can see that. Okay, so I'll be talking mostly about Pakistan Stock Exchange, a general overview of stock exchange, performance of Pakistan Stock Exchange over a certain time period. But before I, I, I do that, just a disclaimer that uh, it's not an offer of securities or any recommendation for any security or stock. It's a general description of how investments work uh, in PSX. So like investment in any other stock exchange, any other asset class, this is one of the avenues that uh, people can explore to invest in and diversify. For the benefit of investors, I'm sure you're all well aware, but just to summarize, we start with investors. So investors is, is, is the focal and center point to protect the investors' interest and develop an ecosystem, capital market system in Pakistan. We have an APEX regulator, Security and Exchange Commission of Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan Stock Exchange being only stock exchange of Pakistan at this moment is front-end regulator as well. And But to invest in Pakistan stock market, one needs to come through uh, intermediaries. One of those intermediaries is, is brokers, track holders, uh, and we have a representative, uh, Radha Jafri Saab, from, from that area. And the mm -hmm. other way that one can invest is through asset management companies. And we have uh, Madam Ifat also representing an AMC from Pakistan. Once somebody invests in, in stock market, it needs to go through a process of clearing and settlement. We have a national clearing company of Pakistan Limited that uh, provide those services. And your shares, uh, your investments are all held in the custody with CDC, Central Depository Company of Pakistan. And there are different type of uh, accounts that you can park your money in. Roshan Digital is not mentioned here, 
but that's uh, another one, uh, especially for uh, foreign Pakistanis living abroad. So uh, that's the overall ecosystem of uh, Pakistan capital markets. The mission for Pakistan Stock Exchange is to provide a fair, transparent, and efficient marketplace, and, and it's for the capital formation for the investors, for all the stakeholders. Uh, and once you invest in Pakistan Stock Exchange, it's not just an investment for your own benefit. It actually goes into the economy, helps countries export, creates employment, uh, you know, new projects come in, new companies come in. So that capital that goes into stock market, you know, it, it helps develop the country as well. It's not just for our own uh, returns and investments. Over past 10 years, if you look at KSE 100 returns, uh, approximately 7% annualized return is there. It has been generated despite, uh, you know, the dollar and uh, park rupees uh, relationship. You're all well aware of that. So it's a dollar adjust, US dollar adjusted annual returns. So once investing in Pakistan Stock Exchange, either in ETFs, shares, uh, term finance, certificates, sukuks, you are basically helping Pakistan. You are helping create employment and, and uh, it, it, it basically, you know, capital formation and capital markets are like lifeblood of any economy. So capital market, uh, stock markets play a key role in that. And Pakistan is only one stock market at the moment. And for, for uh, instance, since 2016, we had 22 equity listings. New companies came on uh, and listed on stock exchange, 27 debt instruments, two GEM listing. GEM is growth enterprise market. It's like to help uh, small and medium Companies come and list in, on a stock exchange. There were rights issue as well. So 830 billion rupees were raised uh, by listings on Pakistan Stock Exchange since 2016. Uh, a glance at market, there were there are 533 listed companies, 249, half of it or 249 are Sharia compliant. Market size is US dollar 44.5 or $45 billion, 269,000 investors, over 200 brokers, 13 indices and, and six ETFs. We'll briefly talk about the indices and ETFs as well. If you look at the market cap, so there are about 35 sectors in uh, indigenous sector classification, local classification, and 25% uh, is for others, but let's look at commercial banks. They are like 19%, uh, oil and gas 12%, uh, food and personal care products, cement, fertilizer, chemical, tobacco, automobile assemblers, textile and technology companies. The rest of the sectors uh, you know, make up 25% uh, of the market cap. So it's a rich diversified stock market uh, from that perspective. If you look at the product suite that is offered for investors by Pakistan Stock Exchange, so I'll just quickly go over. There's a uh, market for equities and gem. Look at the futures. Futures are derivative instruments, and we have deliverable futures, and we have stock index future contracts. So if you want to take exposure on index uh, contracts, there are two, three indices that you can take exposure on. Real Estate Investment Trust, ETFs, the ETFs and Real Estate uh, Investment Trust REITs, they trade on, on equities, uh, on ready market. Yeah. Under ETF, we have one Sharia compliant ETF and, and the rest of our conventional ETFs. We have corporate debts, TFCs, term finance certificates, books. Uh, you can also trade uh, government debt securities, PBILs, PIBs, books, but this is through uh, brokers. Those are uh, enabled for trading in government securities. We have indices, conventional indices, KSC 100, the famous one, you know, whole world knows about it, KSC 30, KSC all. Islamic indices, we have KMI, uh, Karachi Mizan Index 30, PSX, KMI all shares, and 
a couple of sectoral indices. We have if we have six indices, those perform work as the benchmark for six ETFs. I'll talk about ETFs in, in a moment about those ETFs. And we also provide uh, market data, but this is more on a professional side. If you look at 10 year performance, because volatility is part of equity markets. So people who come and invest, uh, there are different types of people. Some of people, you know, the investors, they are most, you know, may go for a speculative run, others more on an investment note. So we are looking from an investment perspective, volatility given inherent to any equity market over 10 years, uh, KSC 100 generated 6.93, 7% uh, approximately per annum return over 10 years, US dollar adjusted. If you look at MSCI emerging markets, those generated about 4.52%. So uh, it is like outperforming over 10, 10, 10 years time period. Likewise, if we look at uh, KMI 30, so if, if somebody wants to take an exposure on KMI 30, with only 30 stocks, Sharia compliant, and, and compare it with MSCI emerging market, so it's 5.7%, 4.52. So it is still uh, overall investment for this time period that we're talking about, it's outperforming. If we look at ASC 100, versus uh, MSCI front frontier markets. So this is the chart that means you can see over 10 years, almost close performance, 6.93, 6.86%, but again, dollar adjusted uh, returns. And KMI 30, if compared, uh, it's a little bit underperforming, but, but it's close to the performance of uh, MSCI. So these are the two indices one is Sharia KMI and the other is KSE 100 that we can compare with, with the world, uh, emerging as well as frontier. One of the uh, things that any investor would like to see before investing is price to earning ratio. Price to earning, um, very briefly put, is how much money are you paying to buy a stock uh, whose earning is X. So it's a relationship between price and earning. Uh, so if I am buying a stock, which is uh, for 10 rupees and it's earning per share is also 10 rupees. So basically my, theoretically speaking, I'm covering my you know, acquisition in one year. So the lower the price to earning ratio, uh, keeping other things constant, uh, it, it's better for investment, uh, but it, it's hard in real world to keep other things constant. So uh, for the definition purposes, we kept it constant. So looking at Pakistan, uh, as of January 31st, the price to earning ratio is 5.03. Uh, Moving on by increasing uh, price to earning Hong Kong, Sri Lanka, MSCI Emerging, MSCI Frontier, China, the higher the price to earning ratio, the expensive stock, stock is. Uh, keeping other things constant, I, I just tried to, to say that. So one is not misled by only price to earning ratio. There are other factors one needs to see before investing. So if you look at India, it has 25. This is average price to earning of, of the market. Moving on to the next, uh, the second fundamental uh, ratio that we look at or one should look at while investing is dividend yield ratio. How much dividend the stock is going to produce per annum uh, based on the price that, that he or she has paid. And once again, as of January 31st, dividend yield ratio for Pakistan is 7.9%. The higher the dividend yield, the better is it is. So these are the countries that, that we occasionally normally compare with uh, and if you look at uh, this, we are best in this set of countries in terms of providing the dividend. Recent developments that Pakistan Stock Exchange has been after and you know, a lot of resources and attention has been there and we have been constantly developing and improving. Uh, and ETFs is, is one example. So, uh, we won the best Islamic stock exchange award in 2021. 
uh, online account opening facility was introduced. So now, you know, someone doesn't need to actually go to a brokerage house. We're talking about Pakistan, get the account open. All can be done online. We have added uh, market makers to our uh, debt securities uh, segment and about 11 market makers are there. We are acquiring a state-of-the-art new trading system implementation, hopefully planned in, in the first half of this year. We have signed uh, an agreement uh, with Deutsche Force for our market data. So more and more people, institutional and uh, in, uh, professional investors will be knowing about Pakistan by having this agreement. We have launched six ETFs uh, in the past two years and uh, six indices were also introduced. We started GEM board, two companies have been listed on GEM board and COVID-19, and I'm pleased to say that the whole COVID-19 period, the stock we've seen did not close and we kept on working even with very small number of people, but it's based on the technology. And Roshan Digital Accounts certainly is something that all, almost all overseas Pakistanis are, are aware of. This is a joint initiative by State Bank of Pakistan, SECP, and in other situations. Going, coming to ETFs, uh, Dr. Sub gave uh, a good introduction. So I'll just briefly talk about uh, names, constituents, and what these ETFs are about. So UBL ETF gives you, uh, launched in March 2020, it gives you exposure of a market, but takes the, keeps the oil and gas companies aside. So if you don't like oil and gas companies and you want to take exposure to market, then UBL Pakistan is, is the ETF. NIT would like to give exposure to KSC 100 by uh, you know, investing in companies that uh, are, are major companies KSC 100. Then two more, two more ETFs were launched in October 2020. Mizan Pakistan ETF is, is the, one of the most traded ETFs, Sharia compliant. Uh, so Sharia flavor comes through Mizan. National Bank of Pakistan ETF is uh, once again gives a general exposure to the market. 15 stocks are there in this ETF. Then two ETFs were recently launched uh, in, the, in the last month. And, and luckily we have one of the pioneers uh, in this session with us, uh, Madam Ipad, from, from JS. And it is a unique and only product that, that we have that talks about smart beta uh, and momentum factor. So she'll, she'll talk about that. And the other ETF, which was launched uh, recently is Alpha Consumer Index. Once again, it gives a flavor of consumer. So what's good about ETFs is as the markets grow, uh, overall number of companies grow, the ETFs would try to provide exposure to certain sectors. So you can have a portfolio composed of different ETFs, for example, and, and, and get exposure to different flavors. So in, in, in a very brief, it's ETF is a portfolio in a share. It won't give you the volatility that a share might give you. Uh, but once again, the returns are also based on weighted average of the portfolio that ETF invests in. These are very uh, transparent ETFs. You can go on PSX data portal and click on the ETF. You will know how much of uh, ETF is invested in different stocks transparent. Uh, during the day, every 15 seconds, you get to see value of the ETF, uh, approximate value we call indicative net asset value. So one can uh, uh, have bid and ask. People normally talk about lack of liquidity and one of the questions were there in, in, uh, in, in this webinar, why ETFs are not successful as in US. Uh, it, it probably is not an apple to apple comparison. U.S. market is huge. Thousands of companies are there. Different stock exchanges are there. The uh, you know level of literacy, uh, sophistication of market, availability of different products uh, like you know availability of, of options, hedging mechanism, all those sort of things are available over there, which we are developing to. And our market is a very small, 500 companies. Uh, liquidity is among top, say, 30 companies are the ones that are traded. So the limit, it, it's a limited sphere that we are working on. It is a success. We, we, we don't say it's not a success. It is a success. Number of ETFs are coming. Three more ETFs are, are in the pipeline. 
So that all tells that investors want ETF, asset management companies realize the importance of ETFs. And we have about four market makers at present, we're talking to do more. And, and these market makers, although even if it's not traded, you will see bid and ask available. So you can have a look at bid and ask if you like the price, you can buy. Somebody, some market maker will be there to sell you and uh, to sell it to you and to buy it from you. Uh, and those investors who are new in the stock market may start their journey with, with ETFs. So volatility won't be that much, returns will be there, flavor will be there, they, they get to know how things work and then they can move on to even if they like and they have the time and the expertise to go and uh, start investing in uh, individual stocks as well. So with that, I think if uh, I did not run over my time, so please do visit www.psx.com.pk. That's the main website, dps.pxs.com.pk. It is the data portal. You will have a lot of information available on this on, on our website to uh, you know how to invest, even about Ocean Digital and different equities uh, and products. So with that, thank you very much. I'm handing over uh, back to uh, the council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hassan Raza Sahab. Uh, you gave us a good briefing about the Pakistan Stock Exchange uh, uh, performance and the good yield and the experience about how one can go into this market. I guess we have um, added to our knowledge. Thank you very much for giving us the brief. Uh, the way to approach to the stock market, we have two learned speakers uh, next to uh, me now, Mr. Raza Jaffrey. He is Director Research Internal Markets. He's uh, BSc in Accounting and Finance from the University, Lahore University of Management Sciences and he's CFA Charter Holder. He has possesses over 15 years of experience and in research and sales. So he will give us a good briefing about the sales of the equities. Uh, he had been in uh, AKD Securities as head of the research before joining the IMS. Mr. Raza Jaffrey, please uh, brief us about how we can go and invest into the Pakistan stock market. Uh, Dr. Hadi, thank you so much. I, I hope everybody can hear me. I'll just uh, share my screen. Um, I have a little presentation put together. Um, and I hope everybody can see me and hear me clearly. Um, yeah. So the, thank you. Um, so the, the idea is to um, obviously tell you a little bit about what's happening in the market. And I think, uh, uh, you know, Hassan spoke about, uh, you know, the market is cheap relative to others. And, and this, mark, this presentation touches a little bit um, about that as well. Um, we will talk a little bit uh, about recent developments. Um, and the most recent development is that we have been reclassified as a frontier market. Last four years, we were an emerging market. We are currently a frontier market. So we'll discuss what that means, why this has happened. Um, we will discuss how we look as an economy and as a market versus other frontier markets. Uh, I realize that uh, sitting in uh, Europe, sitting worldwide, our overseas Pakistanis have, uh, you know, the whole world open to them in terms of investment opportunities. But... Uh, you know, even within the frontier markets uh, that we compete with or the other world markets, uh, Pakistan does look quite good. Um, and so we look into some of the reasons why Pakistan looks good uh, from an investment perspective. Um, and now, basically, uh, you know, we were, we were um, downgraded uh, by the MSCI, which is a global um, um, party, uh, so to speak, and, and and this happened. This downgrade was announced in in summer, in the middle of 2021. It was effective at the end of November. Uh, on paper, it looks like it's a bad thing, um, but uh, it it could arguably work out in our favor. In emerging markets, we were competing with uh, you know maybe uh, very large economies. Uh, you know the the BRIC uh, economies, for instance, Brazil, Russia, um, India, South Africa, for instance. Um, even China to an extent. And, uh, you know, the, while the pool of money that is, um, you know, targeting those, those markets is larger, um, you know, we were just a very, very small 
uh, size within those markets. And so we were easy to ignore. But within the frontier uh, market space, uh, we uh, are much more difficult to ignore. And so we are on the radar of, of foreign funds uh, that actually work in frontier markets. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And uh, the reason for the downgrade is not because our development slowed down or because we, we did, took a step that was uh, not liked. I'll give an example. Um, like Hassan mentioned that, you know, during the COVID crisis, the stock market did not close for a single day, while the Bangladesh market, for instance, did uh, for several months. Um, you know, those are the sort of things that, that count against you. Uh, so we, we didn't do any of that. It is just that, uh, you know, the performance... Uh, of certain stocks that were part of the index, uh, you know, fell off. And, and to a great extent, that was because the currency slipped. And so a lot of this criteria of emerging market and frontier market, um, that is dependent or, or that is classified in dollar terms. So simply because your currency slipped significantly, uh, you fell behind the criteria. So it's not as if Pakistan is suddenly a bad market. It is just a classification that you can look through. Um, and when you compare to other frontier markets, um, you know, Pakistan does um, begin to look good. Very quickly, um, and I think Dr. Kesa mentioned this at the start, uh, there are 28 uh, markets or countries classified as frontier. Um, Pakistan is one of them. Uh, these uh, range from uh, markets in Asia, including the GCC, uh, most of them in Africa, some in Europe as well, uh, Eastern Europe mostly, uh, but Europe nonetheless. So um, this is the peer group that we are now being assessed against. It is a a wide uh, peer group um, in the sense that, uh, um, you know, in terms of uh, population, in terms of absolute GDP size, we are one of the largest. Uh, but unfortunately, in GDP per capita terms, uh, we are uh, towards the end uh, or the bottom of this uh, group. Um, and, uh, and like a lot of other markets, uh, you know, uh, we do face uh, risk from oil prices. Um, these are, you know, some selected economic indicators that I that I took. As you can see, the, the second column, the weight in FM 100 um, shows that we will not be ignored. We, we you know, for funds tracking uh, uh, Pakistan from abroad, um, you know, we, we are a market in, in, you know, in size terms comparable to, you know, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Oman, Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, as you can see on the screen, on, on, in terms of GDP, uh, we are more than $250 billion, um, again, on the higher side. GDP growth is decent in the context of, uh, you know, um, the other markets in this group. We are a large market, so our companies will always have that domestic demand to cater to, which is why year in, year out, uh, you will see their uh, sales and their profitability. Um, and I think one of the things to keep in mind is uh, when we're talking about the stock market, you will, of course, um, compare it against the returns that you are making in other asset classes, particularly in fixed income. And so it is important that, uh, you know, interest rate, the, the inflationary and inf interest rate environment is in your favor. Now, of course, globally, in inflation is a, is a major concern because of global commodity prices, but the outlook for the next 12 months is still better. Uh, the pressures are being felt now and maybe felt for the next few months. But from a 12-month perspective, 15-month perspective, inflation is expected to come down. And so if you look at what Pakistan's interest rates stand at, they stand at 9.75%. And the interest rates is expected to converge towards 8% in fiscal year 23. So from that perspective, um, interest rates in Pakistan from a forward-looking perspective are in positive territory. And a lot of other markets in the frontier space, they're not in positive territory. So that's a good thing. Uh, this means that, uh, you know, whenever inflation settles down um, globally, um, you know, you'll find that, uh, you know, money can begin to move towards Pakistan quickly, simply because we will have room to reduce our interest rates. And when interest rates come down, money tends to shift from, uh, you know, fixed income towards equities. Um, so that's a very important factor to keep in mind. Um, this is also touched upon uh, by previous speakers. Um, we're not obviously, you know, when you compare us to developed markets, we're not very large and very liquid. But uh, within the frontier space, uh, we're not too bad. I mean, uh, you can compare us to, uh, you know, markets uh, such as Sri Lanka, very, very illiquid. Um, we are still quite decent. In fact, some of the fund, foreign fund managers that we speak to tell us that the good thing about Pakistan is that you can pick and choose the sectors that you like. You don't have to, 
you know, be dictated to by how liquid or how tradable the stock is. So um, as Hassan mentioned in his presentation, uh, you know, a wide variety of sectors, whether it is banks or oil or consumer or fertilizer or cement that, or even technology that are available to invest in. Um, we have a lot of uh, multinational companies as well, um, you know, that, that uh, are household names. And these companies uh, can be bought at cheaper multiples relative to maybe their home countries, um, you know, and they're offering you that growth in, 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 in a very large market. Let us not forget that Pakistan is the fifth largest population in the world. And there is a reason why these companies are here. And there is a reason why these companies are doing well, uh, simply because they have a very large ready-made market um, here. And so all of these companies that I, uh, you know, the, the logos that you can see on the screen, these are all listed here in Pakistan. These are all uh, locally incorporated companies. But the parent companies are abroad. You can invest in all of them um, here uh, if you choose. Uh, this is something that I mentioned uh, that, you know, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, uh, you'd be surprised, but uh, uh, not just the overseas Pakistanis, but the, um, you know, foreign institutions uh, that are that are present there um, abroad. I mean, they they do, uh, you know, you know, there are times when they really like Pakistan. This is, uh, um, you know, an excerpt from uh, the quotes from Tundra Fonda. He's the, he's this, uh, you know, the CIO and founding partner. And he says that, you know, when you come to Pakistan, you get pleasantly surprised. The financial infrastructure compared to a lot of the other markets is, is quite good. It stands out. Um, there, you know, there are no foreign ownership limits. It's a very friendly climate for uh, foreign investors. So not just for overseas Pakistanis, but for uh, foreign investors in general, it's a very friendly climate. And then there's the perception arbitrage. I mean, we are a cheap market, uh, but the, you know, the, one of the reasons that we're cheap is uh, the fact that we, you know, get a lot of bad press. And, uh, and so as long, you know, as, and, and I'm sure the Abu Dhabi Council and, uh, you know, Neem Saab in, uh, in Austria, they're working at it to improve the perception. And I think as the gap between perception and reality closes, um, you will see money um, flow into uh, Pakistan for, for investment. Um, uh, this is again something that uh, that has spoke about in you know the previous speaker and uh, very quickly we are a cheap market uh, the price to earnings multiple is a very widely used uh, um, metric and and so we are on the cheaper side compared to the other frontier markets uh, that we just saw in terms of profit growth uh, simply because we are such a large market we have battle hardened uh, corporates our corporate profitability um, you know, it's expected to be in the 10 to 15 percent range in the next uh, few years. We offer very strong return on equity, and despite all of this, uh, you know, our, we stand at a roughly 60 percent discount to other frontier and emerging markets, uh, while the discount in the last uh, 10 years has averaged 35 percent, and and we are right now roughly double that historical discount. So, relative to our history, we're a very cheap uh, market. Relative to a lot of the other markets that we spoke about, we're very cheap. The return um, in rupee terms, the last 10 year return has been 14%, 18% in, do, uh, uh, in the last 20 years. Even if you adjust it for dollar, uh, you know, the PKR depreciation, it's still a very healthy 7% uh, return on average for the last seven years. We have underperformed uh, for the last three to four years. As you can see on the screen, it's not been the greatest performance, but you know, you can look at it as glass half full. Uh, you you know when when the market turns towards a bull market, and I think that's going to happen once we get a handle on you know global oil prices and inflation. Uh, there's a lot of room for us to catch up, and and so you know within a very quick span of time, you can make up for the uh, for the prior year's underperformance. Um, one of the reasons why why the market's done what it's done in the last three four years, and I and and I while I still maintain that you know foreign investors uh, like Pakistan simply because we were such a small um, fish in a, in a big pond, uh, that is the emerging markets um, that we were ignored and foreign investors were consistent sellers um, in the last four years. And, and because it's not a very large market, this selling had to be absorbed by locals. So in the last four years, the local investors have absorbed about uh, $2 billion of net foreign selling. Now that that is over, um, we are back in uh, the frontier markets. In the last few months, we've actually seen net foreign buying uh, come through. And I think that is the new normal. We do not think that foreigners will be selling anymore. If anything, we, you know, we would expect to see some inflow uh, come through. 
and, and and so that is another factor that you can have in your investment decision making that this selling pressure um, is now over and and that is another factor that is going to support uh, the market going up and lastly um, there was a brief talk about the Russian digital account um, happy to report that uh, this is data I've pulled off from the uh, NCCPL overseas Pakistani activity in our stock market has picked up significantly on a gross level <laughs> every day roughly 10 percent of the business is conducted by overseas Pakistanis and uh, it seems as if uh, you know this has picked up after the introduction of the Russian digital account so most of the money seems to have gone into you know simply into the bank account uh, earning a fixed uh, rate of return but some of the money has also made its way into stocks and equities and, and I think it's a very encouraging sign that they are the overseas Pakistanis um, are now contributing about 10% of the daily uh, turnover on the exchange. And I hope uh, that that continues after, you know, initiatives uh, such as today. Um, so that's uh, what I had uh, uh, for you. And I hope you found it useful. Um, you know, this is just something that you can quickly look over. I mean, we are a large market. We cannot be ignored now in the FM space. We are continuing our reforms. So the government is sticking to conventional macroeconomic policies, is not derailing. We are back into the IMF program. And so that gives you that comfort on macroeconomic reforms. As I talked about before, we're very cheap uh, when it comes to valuations. We have a lot of catch up potential. Our corporate's uh, profitability is resilient. And the risks that we face are very similar to risks that are faced by a lot of the other frontier markets and arguably already at the price. Um, so I hope this encourages you, to, you know, participate in investment. Part time stock. Thank you very much. Over to you, uh, Dr. Hadi. Thank you very much, uh, Reza Jaffe Saab, for giving us. Uh, uh, good news that the overseas Pakistanis uh, are now contributing to the to business uh, turnovers in the stock market. So I'm happy to learn that the digital Russian digital accounts marketing done by overseas Pakistanis very uh, aggressively, particularly Dr. Kaiserani's uh, efforts of the Pakistan Business and Professional Council in Abu Dhabi and joined by Mr. Shahid Nadim in Austria. Something is moving forward and moving very positively. Thank you very much, uh, Raza Jafisa, for giving us a brief on the subject of investments and the research in the Pakistan stock market in comparison with the other frontier markets. Uh, we have a learned speaker, um, a master <clears throat> of finance from Rothman School of Management, University of Toronto. We have She has master of business administration from Institute of Business Administration, Karachi. Ms. Ifat Zahra Mankani, the Chief Executive Officer of JS Investments Limited. She joined the organization in April 2021. She has 21 years of experience both in public and private markets across multiple assets classes, 11 years working with the capital markets in Pakistan. She has been holding the roles of Chief Investment Officer and Head of Research leading asset management companies of Pakistan. She has worked in the financial and management consulting institutions for 10 years, associated with PwC, Bank of Montreal, CIBC in Canada, and made significant contribution in risk management. So she can brief us about how to do less risky investments in the Pakistan stock market. Yes, Ms. Ifat, please. Thank you, Dr. Sir, um, and thank you uh, for inviting me to this webinar. Um, <clears throat> so um, I'll be talking about the JS Momentum Exchange Traded Fund, which uh, Hassan in his presentation pointed out is one of the six ETFs that were launched. Um, when we talk about investing in industry, we know that exchange traded funds have been one of the most disruptive forces and have accumulated $10 trillion globally. So when I was looking at one of the questions, uh, they were saying that why it's not a very popular investment class over here. So the first ETF, as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, was launched in 2020. 
through the combined uh, efforts of SCCP, PSX, market makers, and EMCs. Uh, what SCCP and PSX have done is a strong tailwind for ETF growth in coming years. But let's understand it's not a silver bullet. Uh, we expect gradual changes like it happened in the US and UK. And it would, uh, it has, this share class has the potential to significantly spur growth and uh, the number of new investors in Pakistan. Um, I'll just share my screen uh, and explain what, uh, how our ETF is different and the strategy that it follows. Um, I hope you can see that. Okay. Um, so JSM uh, F ETF, it trades under uh, JS Momentum Factor Exchange Traded Fund, it trades under the symbol of JSMF ETF, and it follows a small beta strategy. So um, I'll talk about what small beta is and what momentum is in the next 10 minutes quickly. Um, so, and also talk about a little bit of sector investing. So SMART beta is a rule-based portfolio building process. Uh, it systematically selects rates and rebalances portfolio holdings based on factors or characteristics versus a market capitalization approach. So usually index, indices are cons, uh, constructed using market capitalization approach, but SMART beta uh, diversifies differently it tells uh, portfolio holdings across different factors. Uh, these strategies have been developed by academic experts and practitioners to address the limitations of traditional indices. Um, active equity mutual funds uh, typically allocate money to different uh, uh, companies by rotating sectors versus this one that invests in factors that have proven historically to capture market inefficiencies. Uh, in other words, smart beta indices incorporates diversified exposure to various sources of equity returns. Um, so when I mentioned factors, so let me explain a little about what is uh, factor investing because uh, smart beta is a subset of factor investing. So what is factor, what are factors or what is factor investing? So factor investing is about investing in securities featuring certain characteristics that have proved to deliver higher risk adjusted returns than the market over time, following a fixed set of rules. Uh, in other words, it's based on the systematic exploitation of a number of premiums called factor premiums that have shown to be robust over time. Uh, factor investing can refer to uh, macroeconomic factors, which affect returns across asset classes, as well as style factors, which affect returns within asset classes and can be implemented with or without leverage. Um, we, when we talk about the benefits of uh, smart fee, uh, beta factor investing, so uh, factor premiums, as I said, have been extensively documented in academic literature for over four decades, uh, decades. Um, on, although initially they were uh, discovered by the stock market, these premiums can also be found in most asset classes, including bonds and uh, currencies or commodities. The primary strength of ETFs is the cost-effective passive diversification they offer an investor. Uh, it's easy to think of diversification in the sense of broad market verticals like stocks, bonds, or a particular commodity. Uh, but uh, it's ETFs also let investors diversify across different horizontals like industries. So you can have consumer ETFs, just what we spoke about. Uh, it would take a lot of money and effort to buy all the components of a particular basket. So if you're investing in stock, uh, it, it does require a lot of effort, but with the click of a button, an ETF delivers those benefits to your portfolio. Uh, secondly, making investment decisions we know is not an easy thing. It's uh, increasingly data-driven world with growing uh, complexities uh, and also the nature of in information. Smart beta actually uh, paves a way for a durable investment style that uh, lets you do it in a very disciplined manner and take advantage of those market inefficiencies. 
uh, we also strongly believe that a uh, developing market like ours offer uh, tremendous opportunities to gain from these factor risk premiums that I just talked about. Why is uh, eliminating human bias important? So I'll uh, quickly touch on that, uh, that uh, we, we should uh, all as asset managers, we should inculcate that what investment discipline is, um, what uh, not to undermine that what active asset managers can actually do uh, something great, uh, active managers can do something great and then uh, can actually uh, pick up stocks and that does deliver returns. But when you do the factor investing and uh, what we do is uh, we do and try to encapture whatever the active managers do. So we just don't try to be benchmark in this uh, JS Momentum Factor ETF. It just doesn't try to be only a benchmark. Uh, when we call it the active passive is uh, we try to focus on what makes passive really works. It got its low fees, uh, but it also has a really unemotional approach to it. Um, so that's, that's the main advantage of going to a very disciplined investment strategy. Uh, and then uh, whatever those active managers do, we quantify that and uh, capture 80 percent and then keep the fees low so pretty much you're outperforming uh, what the market returns would be uh, next what i wanted to talk about is what is momentum so simplistically speaking uh, momentum investors are one who are discouraged not discouraged by the high price uh, or the fact that the stock price is rising Investors are actually attracted to a company whose price is on an upward trajectory. Uh, momentum investors spend their hopes that their upward price momentum will continue on um, for some more time and they'll be able to sell it at a higher price. So that's a typical clear definition of momentum that you keep on investing in price uh, in stocks whose prices are rising. And because uh, the uh, this ETF rebalances on a on a monthly basis, so once we see that that price has uh, exhausted the, price, the momentum of increasing prices, we quickly shift into the next 10 uh, stocks, which have actually shown the momentum in the previous outgoing month. Uh, so why did we, uh, so as I said, that factors could invest, uh, factors could include dividend yield or uh, value size and uh, volatility, why we decided to go on with the momentum or what are the benefits of investing in a momentum strategy is uh, that momentum is, uh, has found to be very persistent across economic cycles. So when we look at different literature or the academic studies, uh, momentum has shown its persistence. Uh, and uh, another factor is, you keep on hearing that speculative stocks uh, uh, are used in our markets and our, our markets are very speculative. But uh, we feel that uh, that concept or that thinking has actually harmed our frightened our small investors uh, from wealth creation. We strongly feel that uh, there is a certain skill of stock pickers in our market and they deal with a very rapidly uh, expanding information base. So we try to capture uh, their skill set through momentum strategy. Uh, and uh, it works. Uh, uh, what we, we back tested it for 20 years and it has proven to outperform market returns. Uh, it, uh, it is not only, uh, so momentum, uh, as I said, it is not only uh, present in US, but also in our markets. If uh, the KSE 100 index has increased by 19% in the past six years, this strategy has uh, shown to outperform and uh, shown a net annualized return of 25%. Um, so it gives uh, it gives an answer to those. Uh, so uh, these are some of the numbers. If you see the international performance and the uh, look uh, uh, of some of the momentum ETFs in international markets. Um, 
and I'll, uh, I've already uh, talked about how we backtested this strategy for past 20 years and um, this has uh, outperformed, but uh, typically speaking, it doesn't, uh, it initially picks uh, how this index is constructed. It's composed of PSX large and mid capitalization stocks uh, exhibiting re relatively higher price momentum. Um, it's based on the premise that stocks with positive momentum, uh, winners tends to continue to outperform over several, uh, and uh, KC and all shares while losers tend to outperform. Uh, so positive momentum in a way also depicts underlying good fundamentals. Uh, and uh, therefore we believe that it should, uh, should outperform the journal index. These are some of the facts so we launched it on January 7. Uh, uh, we uh, have a management fee of 0.5% versus some active funds, which is 2%. Uh, the expense ratio currently, is high because it's just uh, one month of trading, so we can't really uh, point out the expense ratio at this point in time, but the upper limit on expense ratio by SECP on ETF is 2.5%. Um, the rebalancing I've pointed out of 30 days, uh, the net assets are roughly close to 45 to 50 million at this point in time. The ticket is JSMF ETF. Uh, we do the uh, rebalancing on the fifth working day of every month. Uh, the methodology I just shared with you, so I'll uh, quickly skip one of the factors that are limiting the growth of ETF at the moment is that they are low, uh, although there is a bit and price offer a bit available. But GSMF ETF has actually tend to outperform in terms of volumes. The average volume has been roughly close to around 350,000 shares versus the other ETFs available in the market in the past uh, one month uh, or 40 days. As I said, uh, uh, that we have back tested the strategy uh, and it has shown to outperform. But it has uh, not only on a return basis, but also it has delivered a sharp ratio of 1.59 versus 1.25 for the KSC all share index. So it has developed, uh, it has delivered, this strategy has delivered uh, better risk adjusted returns. Uh, in terms of if we look, want to look at the drawdowns, uh, the strategy has returned 5.1% in positive one uh, positive months at KSC and uh, PSX or declined by 3.4% in negative months. Um, it, out of 240 months of back testing, the strategy has outperformed 51% of the time. So we have also broken down it in two different time periods. Uh, uh, just last bit of in how to invest in JSMF ETF. Uh, it is listed on PSX. Uh, the ETF was started uh, with a value of 10 rupees. Uh, so roughly you can begin investment with as low as 5,000 rupees. Uh, uh, Raza and Hassan have already pointed out about the RDA side of things. Uh, also, uh, uh, as far as a JSMF ETF or the ETF side of things, it's very simple. You can, uh, if you already have a uh, account with any broker, you can uh, simply look at the symbol and invest in this fund. Uh, J, uh, we we are the oldest sector. So just to quickly about ourselves, uh, JS Investments is the oldest private sector asset management company in Pakistan. It's uh, rated AM2. Uh, it offers a wide range of investment products, including mutual funds, VPS, and SMAs. Uh, we are also licensed for the REIT, uh, as well as uh, for the VC and private equity fund management services. Uh, we are the member of Mutual Fund of Pakistan, and we are also a listed company. Uh, do visit uh, for to know more about this fund either on the PSX website or JSIL.com's website to know more about this fund. So thank you so much, and uh, back to Dr. Shai. Thank you so much, Ipa uh, Saiba. Uh, thank you so much, Ipa. Uh, really learning from you about this momentum. Uh, 
this GS momentum factor. I was not aware. Uh, I'm just uh, straight. And the benefit is that by capturing consistent or performance, that is a great thing. And pairing with performance uh, momentum and outperform during economic expansion and work under rule based. Very good points. I was not aware, and this is knowledge to me, I must say. And uh, it seems to be good for investor. Uh, I really thank you. I thank uh, uh, Mr. Hassan Raza for his complete introduction and making an understand all the investor how the Pakistan Stock Exchange works there and how transparent they are and how successful they are. Uh, they are comprehensive. Uh, deliberation by Radha Jaffer, Jaffri Saab. I really appreciate uh, how he identified it's the best market. It's the best market. Uh, it's Pakistan Stock Exchange saying in 10 years, 7%. And then price earning ratio is, is 5.03, which is the cheapest there. And dividend yield to 7.90%. And a constant 7% with the dollar market is super, I must say, when you compare to that. Uh, as uh, uh, Hassan al mentioned, there are 269,000 investors. This is our all overseas Pakistani target to take it to million people investor account there. So that's the difference. The more knowledgeable people will be there, the more they will come. And I will add to uh, um, Mr. Shahi Saab that he mentioned that if we have the translation now with Google, we can translate everything. And if we can translate, we can capture other market apart from Pakistani. And that's what he's talking that Pakistanis know their re language, European languages, and that will be a big advantage. And very important uh, message out of this uh, event. Um, side by side, I really commend all the, the Pakistan Stock Exchange that they maintained it during pandemic and never been closed. That was super thing. International markets, international market, I understand they are big players. And of course, when the, uh, you know, when the things goes down, sometime the investor, the foreign investor leaves and I appreciate the Pakistan investor to absorb all those investments of $2 billion uh, thing, but I'm sure they will come back and there will be more uh, investment coming from the international market. Uh, side by side, uh, this Pakistan Business Council, Pakistan Business Professional Council will, will certainly have more series of such events and uh, I would like other uh, Pakistan, Pakistan Talkshin should arrange other series of like this together with uh, uh, also with uh, other leading uh, organization so we can attract more investor to the Pakistan Stock Exchange. Uh, State Bank of Pakistan has done good job. One message I want to give from here that apart from whatever you open an online bank, which is very easy now, you can repatriate your dividend in dollars. You can repatriate your, even if you want to say, no, I don't want to continue, you can take back money in dollar. So you're not depleting your, your investment. Your investment is there as if it's in the dollar. That's the best facility provided by State Bank of Pakistan. And which, for which reason, uh, I again recommend all the overseas Pakistani to come forward and I will request all our uh, participants to, to educate more frequently, more uh, example of success story about Pakistan Stock. Pakistan Stock Exchange is one of the best stock exchange uh, in the world, I always say, in the region, because our, we work uh, closely with the edX, the Dubai financial market. We are working closely. Uh, just for information, this council have made six agreements between the Dubai financial, uh, uh, DFM, Dubai financial market and edX with the, when that time Karachi stock exchange and that time Lahore stock exchange. Now, of course, it's Pakistan stock exchange. It's still, we are working. I've given another idea to all, all of you that the ETF, 
we were thinking before bringing six script in the Abu Dhabi stock market and Dubai, because here 192 nationalities are living here. If our scripts coming there, they will see. Now with this today's event, I can see that if we can bring an ETF, like I, I see one, one uh, Chimera Capital and Wheels ETF focus on Kuwait. So Chimera, um, one of my clients also, he is bringing a Kuwait fund to the Abu Dhabi stock market. So we can bring Pakistan ETF here in, in the Abu Dhabi stock market or Dubai financial market. Pakistan Business Council has a very good close relation with these two exchanges. As we are working for last, with them, I am working for the last 10 years, and there are many delegations came from uh, Pakistan stock, uh, Karachi Stock Exchange or Lohar Stock Exchange. So uh, this work of ETF, we also bring to the United Arab Emirates. This will not only, this will motivate other nationalities to take participate in it. And of course, there's a new idea which gave uh, by uh, Jahangir, it's a Siddiqui investment company of momentum factor. I was not aware, honestly. And I, it looked to me good uh, to introduce and it can, everyone can get the value of money. Uh, with that closing, I would like if, if any few words from Shahid Saab after listening all the uh, great deliberation done by all the speakers. Over to Shahid, then I will close after that. Thank you very much, Dr. Anis, uh, for a detailed uh, introduction and overview. And thank you, everyone, really, for a great uh, session, for a great knowledge we have today. Uh, as I said, as a diaspora organization here based in Europe, uh, you don't even uh, need a physical presence here. We are here. We can work with you to spread the word. We can market you. And we can also arrange a physical session here. We can uh, like organize some events that we can promote your things, GS investments, stock exchange, other brokers. So we can bring people on board to invest there. We can educate them. So we can be tool for you and you should use us, as I said. And the other thing is, uh, as I said, uh, is uh, uh, if uh, we can, as uh, discussed before, uh, like a small, um, term of like a knowledge for the basic uh, translation. This we can also help you like in German, French, Spanish, uh, and Italian. These are the major language, but you can cover it. You can sort of like, you can uh, make it in English that might you already have. If you can share, we can translate it for you uh, that uh, can help. And you can also uh, publish on your websites. We can uh, promote it here. So that can also be bring a change. The major thing is to know, to give knowledge people, to educate them. As soon as uh, like organizing such webinars, definitely in future this will bring a change, and that's all for now. I will request any speaker wants to say comment anything more about that. Anything so we can. Uh, thank you, Shah, for your gracious offer, and uh, we would like to stay in touch and. Let's try to promote uh, all yeah, the sure. venues that sure. are uh, uh, so, uh, uh, through Dr. Anis, uh, Dr. Yeah. Anis, through Dr. Anis, you can contact and we can like discuss that how we can, and we are always here like to arrange such events, such things. Thank you. Uh, Radha Jafri Sab, uh, Jafri Sab, you have a very good deliberation. Really, it was education for me, for all the yeah. things, the way you express uh, from international security is really equity thank you so much uh, thank you so much for the kind words thank you for having me i i think this is eye opening for us as well to to understand uh, how we can reach out to the overseas pakistani community in a better way and use uh, you know uh, go through you guys uh, so i think i think that is certainly something that is uh, we will we will uh, you know again uh, look forward to staying in touch and, and taking it forward from here thank you so thank much thank you like hasan razak sahab mentioned that near pakistan so much money has been invested why because uh, they are giving x amount of percentage and it is safe this money all can brought to uh, this uh, on etf or in stock market which can give a better return uh, sort of a thing this we should promote because people want to invest but people want to 
uh, can't take the risk on that account. So this confidence we have to bring in the people by doing more activities on the stock market. We should be like in the United States of America, our, uh, our TV channel and everything should have a dedicated channel for this. This is my suggestion. I know difficult, instead of all other discussion going on in politics, I feel the more Agreed, yeah. debate the success of our companies and that way we can do. With that, I close it and I thank you again to each and everyone for participating and we are well educated by you all and I'm sure this webinar will increase more activity in our Pakistan Stock Exchange. Thank you very much and I thank my board of the council who through their support uh, we have done this even and especially Dr. Hadi Shahid, our founding member. Thank you so much. Thank you very, thank you much, very much, everyone. Thank you. Allah. Allah. Allah.